In this video, we're going to look at quadratic graphs. A question might say, on the grid, draw the graph with equation y equals x squared plus 2x plus 3 for x values between negative 4 and 2. Usually, the first part of this question will involve completing a table of values. And often, some of those values are already completed for you. We just need to fill in the rest. And of course, you'll be given a grid to draw this graph on. To complete the table, we're going to need to use this equation here. The way I like to do this is to write out the equation again, but then replace all of the x's with brackets. So let's replace the x on the x squared with a bracket, so it's now bracket squared. And let's replace the x on the 2x with a bracket, so it's now 2 bracket. Then all we need to do is substitute in the x values to get the corresponding y values. We're going to start at the left hand side of the table here, where x is equal to negative 4. So we're going to place negative 4 inside each of those brackets. So it goes inside this bracket, and it also goes inside this bracket. Then we just need to work this out and it will tell us the corresponding y value. Now you may be lucky and this could come up in a calculator paper, in which case you could just type exactly this into your calculator. But this topic could and has in the past come up on paper 1, so you may not have a calculator and have to work it out yourself. Let's assume we don't have a calculator for this question. So we have y equals, and then we'll look at negative 4 squared. This means negative 4 multiplied by itself, and when you multiply two negatives, the result will be positive. So negative 4 multiplied by negative 4 is positive 16. Now we can look at two lots of negative 4. Two lots of negative 4 is negative 8. And then at the end, we just have plus 3. So plus 3. Then if we just do 16 subtract 8, which is 8, and then add 3 to that, we get 11. So y will be 11. So we found that when x is equal to negative 4, y is equal to 11, so we can put 11 into the table. Now let's move along and have a look at the next one. So this time when x is equal to negative 3. We do this in exactly the same way, we put negative 3's inside the brackets. And work this one out. So we've got y equals negative 3 squared, which will be positive 9. Two lots of negative 3 will be negative 6. And then plus 3 at the end, so plus 3. 9 take away 6 is 3, and if you add 3 to that, you get 6. So when x is negative 3, y is 6. So we can add that to the table. Now let's move along and have a look at when x is negative 2. So if x is negative 2, we put negative 2 inside the brackets. So y equals negative 2 squared, which is positive 4, plus 2 lots of negative 2, which is negative 4, and then plus 3, so plus 3. 4 take away 4 is 0, and then if we add 3 to that, we get 3, so y will be 3. So when x is negative 2, y is 3, so we put 3 into the table. Now the next two values have actually been done for us, so we can move all the way along to when x is equal to 1. So we put 1 inside those brackets. y equals 1 squared, which is just 1, plus 2 lots of 1, and 2 lots of 1 is 2, and then plus 3. So we've just got 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. So we put 6 inside the table. Now we're ready to turn this into a graph. To do this, we're going to plot each pair of x and y values as a coordinate. So the first pair is when x is negative 4 and y is 11. That's the coordinate negative 4, 11. If we plotted that, it would go here. Then we do negative 3, 6, which goes here. Negative 2, 3, which is here. Negative 1, 2, which is here. 0, 3, which is here. 1, 6, which goes here. And 2, 11, which goes here. Now to complete this question, we need to join each of these crosses together. And you might be tempted to get a ruler and join them up with straight lines like this, but this will not get you four marks. This graph is a quadratic graph and it should be a nice smooth curve, so we would draw it something like this instead. Let's have a look at a second example. So for this one, we're going to draw a graph once again and it has equation y equals x squared minus x minus 3, and the x values go from negative 3 to 4, we've got a table, some of the values are filled in for us, and we need to draw on these axes here. So just like before, we'll take the equation, write down the equation, but replace each of the x's with a bracket. So we replace the x squared with bracket squared, and we replace this negative x with negative bracket. We don't need to do when x is negative 3, since that's already been done for us. We will do when x is negative 2, though. So we write negative 2 inside both of those brackets. So we've got y equals negative 2 squared, which is positive 4. And we need to be careful on this next bit here because we're subtracting negative 2. When you subtract a negative number, the result is just like adding the positive number. So this actually equals plus 2. 
and then we have negative 3 at the end. 4 plus 2 is 6, and 6 take 3 is 3, so y will be 3. So let's put that into the table and move on to the next one. So now we have x is negative 1, so let's put negative 1 inside these brackets, and we've got y equals negative 1 squared, which is positive 1, and then we're subtracting negative 1, which is like adding 1, and then we've got subtract 3, so subtract 3. So 1 plus 1 is 2, and 2 take 3 is negative 1. So for this one, y will be negative 1. Now let's move along to when x is 2. So we put 2 inside these brackets. We've got y equals 2 squared, which is 4. Subtract 2, so subtract 2, and then subtract 3, so subtract 3. 4 take away 2 is 2, and 2 take away 3 is negative 1. So we put negative 1 into the table, and we'll move on to the final one when x is equal to 4. So if x is equal to 4, we put 4 inside these brackets. We have y equals 4 squared which is 16, subtract 4, so subtract 4, and subtract 3, so subtract 3. 16 take away 4 is 12, and take away 3 from that is 9, so y is 9. And that's the table complete. Then we plot each of the coordinates. So the first one is negative 3, 9, then negative 2, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 3, 3, and 4, 9. Now we need to join this up with a smooth curve, so it will look something like this. For this question, I want to draw your attention to the bottom of the graph down here. It's a very common mistake at this point for students to draw a horizontal line between those two crosses. It's important though that your graph dips just below this and forms a nice smooth curve still. Sometimes, rather than drawing a quadratic graph, we'll be given one that's already been drawn, and ask some questions about it. So for this one, here is a graph of y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5, and we're going to answer the following questions. Write down the y-intercept of the graph. So the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. The y-axis is the vertical one labelled y, so we can see the graph crosses it here. That's at point 5, so the answer to the question, the y-intercept, is 5. Sometimes they may ask you this as a coordinate, and if it asks it as a coordinate, it would be 0, 5. For part b, it says write down the coordinates of the turning point. The turning point of the graph is this point right down here at the bottom, where the graph turns. Its coordinates are 3 for the x-coordinate and negative 4 for the y-coordinate, so the answer for the turning point is 3, negative 4. Part c says write down the roots of x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. A root is just another name for the solution to an equation. Notice how the left hand side of this equation, x squared take 6x plus 5, is the same as the equation for the graph we drew. The only difference being that our equation says equals 0, whereas the graph said y equals. So what we're really trying to do when we solve this equation is find the x values that give a y value of 0. If we look at the graph that's been drawn for us, y will be equal to 0 when we're on the x axis, since the y coordinate is 0 there. There are two points where the graph crosses the x axis. That's this one here and this one here. So when x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5, y is equal to 0. This means that x equals 1 and x equals 5 are the solutions to that equation, which we call the roots. So for the answer for this one, we would write x equals 1, that's the first root, and also x equals 5, that's the second root. So to find the roots of this equation, since it matches the equation of the graph, we just find where the graph crosses the x axis. And for the final part of this question, we need to write down the equation of the line of symmetry. All quadratic graphs have a line of symmetry that goes through the turning point. So to find the equation of the line of symmetry, I'm going to draw on the line of symmetry first. So it's a vertical line that goes like this through the turning point. All vertical lines are of the form x equals and then some number, that number being where it crosses the x-axis. This line of symmetry crosses the x-axis at the point 3, so the equation is x equals 3. So for the answer for this one, we write x equals 3. Let's try another example like this. So this time we have a different equation, x squared plus 4x minus 5, and here's its graph. So we're going to start by writing down the y-intercept again. So the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, which is here. So this time the answer is negative 5. Then for part b, we're going to write down the coordinates of the turning point. That's the point right down here where it turns, and the x-coordinate is negative 2 and the y-coordinate is negative 9. So for the answer, the coordinates are negative 2, negative 9. Then we move on to part c, we'll need to write down the roots of this equation. 
To find the roots, we're looking for where the graph crosses the x-axis, and that's in two places, which are here and here. So there are two roots for this equation. They are x equals negative 5 and x equals 1. Finally, on to the last part, write down the equation of the line of symmetry. So I'm going to draw on the line of symmetry first, and I see it crosses through the x-axis at negative 2, so the equation is x equals negative 2. Now we're going to try another one, but this one's slightly different. So we have another graph and its equation, and we're going to start by writing down the y-intercept. This is the same as before, we look for where it crosses the y-axis, which is negative 7, so the answer is negative 7. Then for part b, we're going to write down the coordinates of the turning point. This is also the same, so the turning point is here. The x-coordinate is 1, and the y-coordinate is negative 8. So the answer is 1, negative 8. But for part c, things will be a little bit different. So we're going to find the roots, and you can see where it crosses the x-axis here and here. But this time, it doesn't cross at nice numbers. In fact, it says to write down estimates for the roots. So sometimes when finding the roots, we need to do an estimate instead, which means the answer that we give might not be the exact answer, but it will probably be quite close. So let's look at the root on the left-hand side first of all, and if we zoom in, we can see that the graph goes between negative 2 and negative 1. There are five squares separating these numbers, so each square must represent 0.2 rather than 0.1. So this line here will represent negative 1.2. This one will be negative 1.4. This one will be negative 1.6. So the one we want, about here, will be negative 1.8. So for the first root, we would estimate that it's about negative 1.8. Then we do the same idea for the second one, and this one looks like it's one square before the 4, so it will be 3.8. So and 3.8. The final part is the same as before, write down the equation of the line of symmetry, and for this one it goes through this point here, which is 1 on the x-axis, so we'd say the answer is x equals 1. Now we're going to look at one final question that's quite tricky. Sometimes they'll give you a sketch of a graph, like this one here. So it's not been plotted accurately, it's just a sketch, and we can see some information about where it crosses the axes. You might be asked the same questions as before, but one or two of these are a bit trickier. So we're first of all going to write down the y-intercept of the graph. This is not too bad, because we can see where it crosses the y-axis at negative 8. So the answer to this one is negative 8. Then for the second part we're going to write down the roots of the equation. The roots were where the graph crossed the x-axis, and we can see that it's at negative 2 and positive 4. So for the answer for the roots, we write x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 4. So that's OK. Then we need to write down the coordinates of the turning point, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. We can see the turning points down here, but we have no idea what its coordinates are. And we can't read it off the axis because that information is missing. So we need to use another really important fact about quadratic graphs. The x-coordinate of the turning point will always be halfway in between the two roots. So we can see the roots here at negative 2 and 4. So the x-coordinate of the turning point is right in the middle of those. So if we drew lines from those roots to where they meet in the middle, and then went down, we'd find the turning point. So the question is, what is this coordinate here? Well, if it's halfway in between the roots, you can find their midpoint by adding them together and dividing them by 2. So we add together the two roots, negative 2 and 4, and then we divide this by 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2, and then divide that by 2 gives you 1. So we know the x-coordinate of the turning point must be 1. But we also need the y-coordinate, and that's not too obvious either. We can see the graph crosses the y-axis at negative 8, and the turning point is lower than that, so the y-coordinate must be lower than negative 8, but we can't just guess what it must be, we need to work it out accurately. To do this, we're going to use the equation of the graph given in the question. We know the x-coordinate is 1, so if we substitute x equals 1 into this, we'll find the y-value. So we have y equals x squared, but that's 1 squared, subtract 2x, so subtract 2 lots of 1, and then subtract 8. So we just work this out, a bit like we did at the start of the video. So we've got y equals 1 squared, which is 1, subtract 2 lots of 1, so subtract 2, and then subtract 8. 1, subtract 2, subtract 8 is negative 9. So the y-coordinate must be negative 9. So for the answer, we know the x-coordinate will be 1 and the y-coordinate will be negative 9. So 1, negative 9. On to the final part of the question, write down the equation of the line of symmetry. Well now that we know the coordinates of the turning point, this isn't too bad. The line of symmetry goes up through here, and we know the x-coordinate is 1, so it must go through 1 on the x-axis. So the answer to the equation of the line of symmetry is x equals 1. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. 
Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.